Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. If there are others that join us along the way, um, we'll, we'll let them uh, join in in their own time. Um, first of all, I just wanna say thank you very much for attending the webinar today. Uh, we're very pleased to have you with us. Um, secondly, um, I hope that you're all safe and well and um, that your families are as well. Uh, we know this is a very worrying time for, for a lot of individuals. So thank you for, for taking the time to be with us. And, and we hope that the information provided today will be um, helpful to you and useful. And uh, certainly um, we are, are pleased to be able to, to share some further information with you. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'd like to introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Bridget Carey, and I am the Global Recruitment Manager here in the DCU International Office. So some of you may have received emails from me um, over the last number of weeks, so it's, it's great to, to have you with us. Um, I'm also joined by Professor Seichi from the Faculty of Engineering and Computing. So we're very happy to have him with us. Um, he's going to be discussing sort of the, um, the academic nature of, of the program and be able to answer some questions for you um, as we go through this webinar today. Also joining the call, we have Colm Cronin from the International Office as well. We have Anya from the, the Faculty Office. We have Jasmine from our Indian Office. So we have a number of, of staff members also on the call as well. So hopefully we'll be able to, to help you um, with any questions you might have today or, or point you in the right direction. Um, before we get started with any of the um, sort of content of the webinar, I just wanted to cover um, a few housekeeping uh, uh, things. So first of all, um, please make sure to mute your microphones. Um, this will enable us to, to hear the speakers clearly and to make sure there's no background noise. So we appreciate it if you would, would keep yourselves on mute. Um, we do have the chat function um, available within the um, Zoom call, so um, please use that to record any questions that you might have. So as we're going through the information, if there's things that pop into your mind or questions that you might have, please feel free to uh, jot those down in the chat. Colum will be monitoring that and then we'll come, come to them at the end of the webinar and address any questions that you guys have. So feel free to, to use that function. Um, the presentation will probably take somewhere between 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and then, as I said, we'll open it up for questions at the end. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully that will, will give you an opportunity to, to get all the information that you, you need. Please know, however, that we are here always to answer your questions and to help you. So we'll provide some further information about how to contact us or if there are any other um, questions that you want to address with us individually, we're happy to do that as well. Okay, so that being said, we'll, we'll move on. Um, to give you just sort of a, a brief kind of uh, overview of, of the current situation where we're at, I know some um, maybe of the participants today attended our webinar in, in April last month. Uh, where we covered a lot of the, the information um, regarding the COVID-19 situation and the university's response. That webinar was also recorded. So if you did not see that or would like to view that, please let us know and we can send you a recording of it. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of, of what the, the university's response is at the moment, um, certainly we know this is a very uncertain time for, for students and um, you know, you're faced with some difficult decisions at the moment. And really our objective is to provide you with as much information as we can in terms of um, making those decisions and having um, the details to hand in order to do the thing that the best thing for you, both academically and personally. So um, currently we can tell you that the university campuses are still closed. Um, and uh, we are following the um, guidance and advice of both the Irish government as well as the health service executive and um, other public health bodies in terms of our um, response and interactions um, uh, on campus and what we're doing. Um, so we're watching those very carefully. We're in constant contact with, with those organizations in terms of how lockdowns might change, how restrictions are being list, lifted, and uh, we're adapting our um, responses as that happens. So um, please know that we're working hard behind the scenes to um, understand the situation and do everything that we can um, in a timely manner and inform you of that as well. 
Um, one of the things I suppose that we wanted to do for students in this time is really try to provide you with a little bit of certainty around your options and the things that you may be able to do uh, with regard to your plans for 2020-21 and um, particularly around what that means for the you know the achievement of your degree as well as your employment opportunities and things you may want to do after you finish your degree so hopefully we can provide you with some information along those lines but please know there are things that are still in in flux that we may not know and and that we're still working through through a number of things but we're here for you and we're happy to help in whatever way that we can um, you will all be aware that DCU um, launched a number of weeks ago the online on time initiative and again this was really in an effort to provide students with some guidance around what the academic year for 2020-21 might look like um, and hopefully give you some indication then in order to make decisions. So um, at the moment, the on, online on time uh, model is that uh, online or semester one will be delivered online for um, international students and that we will hopefully flex to a uh, hybrid or, or uh, on-campus provision for semester two. So um, we'll continue to inform students as to what that might look like and, and what, what the university will be able to provide. But um, this is what we're, we're working with at the moment and what we're advising students about. Um, and with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Professor Seichi. Um, who's going to talk about the Master's in Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering and give, give you a little bit more information on the, the program and, as I said, answer some questions at the end. So over to you, Professor Seichi. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone, or afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Um, we are going to talk about the Master's in Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering program. So if this is not what you want to hear, you should switch channels now. Next slide, please. My name is Thomas Seichi. I'm the chairperson of, can we come back on one slide, please? I am the chairperson of uh, this program and uh, you can see my uh, contacts there. Now to tell the truth, the phone is my uh, office phone, which is not accessible at the moment. So basically, you can email me with uh, uh, any questions you need me to ask. Next slide, please. Uh, now, this uh, master's program is in a, a widely established area because it uh, uh, kind of unites mechanical engineering, which is basically the product design uh, area, and manufacturing engineering, which uh, deals with uh, how you actually manufacture the products. So it is not a niche area, it is a widely established area. Um, in this program, you will be using advanced computer-aided engineering tools, such as finite element analysis, uh, computational thermofluid uh, software, and so on. And the good thing with this program is that it uh, provides ex excellent job opportunities uh, because it covers uh, such a wide area. Next slide, please. Now, this program is accredited by uh, what's called Engineers Island. Now, Engineers Island is the only uh, accreditation body in Ireland uh, who are entitled to accredit engineering programs, both at uh, undergraduate and uh, postgraduate level. Uh, this program is accredited, obviously, at uh, postgraduate level, at level nine, according to the qualification systems. Uh, what it means is uh, there are two things. Uh, first of all, that um, uh, it uh, provides quality. So it's a kind of quality management system similar to uh, ISO 9000. But most importantly, if you ever want to apply for chartered engineering status, which you would need if you need uh, 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 for a job like signing of a major uh, projects and so on. So this will uh, give you uh, the academic requirements. It will satisfy the academic requirements for the chartered engineering 
uh, engineer stages. Next slide, please. Now, this is the program structure. Uh, in order to get uh, a master's, you need uh, 90 credits. And out of those 90 credits, you will have four specialized modules, specialist modules for 30 credits. Uh, you would uh, do a project uh, for 30 credits and four general modules uh, for the remaining uh, 30 credits. Now, having said that, uh, if you don't want a major, which we are going to talk about it in a moment, then you can just pick and mix uh, eight modules and uh, you don't need to have the four specialist modules, but I would expect that most of you want a ma major as well. And that would require four specialist modules as well. Mind you that the project uh, will be running uh, apart from the two semesters, first and second semesters, uh, it will, will be completed by the end of the summer period. So the summer period is uh, for project development as well. Next slide, please. Now, no matter what uh, major you want to study, uh, your degree, degree uh, specification is MEng in Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering. However, if you do want a major as well, uh, then you can select from four majors, simulation driven design, advanced manufacturing, sustainable systems and energy, or biomedical uh, engineering. As I already told you, uh, it is possible not to select a major, in which case you just get the MNG mechanical and manufacturing engineering. Next slide, please. So here is the first major, which is called simulation driven design. Quite obviously, this is the major for design engineers who develop products. And uh, quite obviously, this is the major who, which will be dealing most, mostly with uh, computer aided engineering tools uh, for manufacturing system simulations, for finite element analysis, computational thermofluid dynamics, and so on. And in order, in order to get the major, you would need to develop a project uh, in the area of uh, simulation driven design. Next slide, please. The second major is in advanced manufacturing, uh, which is the manufacturing side, how to uh, manufacture the product that have been developed by the, uh, the specialists in the, in the first major. So here we will be talking about or uh, dealing with uh, uh, high tech advanced uh, manufacturing, uh, green technologies, sustainable technologies and so on. And again, if you want uh, a major in this area, you would need a project uh, in the area of uh, advanced uh, manufacturing. Next slide, please. The next major is a new one, which is called Sustainable Systems and Energy. Uh, we are launching it in this September. Uh, and uh, this is to, uh, to respond to uh, this new area, or rather a new area in, in Ireland uh, for energy systems, sustainable energy systems. Uh, four specialist modules in this area, and quite obviously uh, a project in sustainable systems or, uh, or energy. Next slide, please. And the last, the fourth major is in biomedical engineering. Biomedical engineering is uh, yet a new, yet another new major that we will be offering in this September. Uh, biomedical engineering deal with it deals with uh, uh, all sorts of equipment uh, in hospital environments, in rehabilita rehabilitation, reanimation, and so on. Uh, so basically, this is design engineer, but uh, uh, with an emphasis on uh, biomedical engineering equipment. Next slide, please. Now, the traditional way of uh, studying is on campus. 
which quite obviously is uh, not an option at the moment because the university is closed. So we are opting for remote access as well. Now, remote access is not a new thing because uh, we have had quite a number of off-campus students already, uh, people working in industry already and studying part-time uh, remote access. But quite obviously the first semester will be in this mode as well uh, for, for everyone. Now, we will be providing all sorts of materials uh, to, uh, to study remote access. Uh, for example, we will provide uh, online materials using our uh, loop uh, system. Loop is an academic uh, environment where we can upload all the sort of materials. Uh, we will provide uh, lectures on video, either direct videos from uh, presentations of lectures or uh, videos produced specifically for the remote access students. Uh, there are no real labs uh, in the master's uh, program in, in terms of uh, measuring uh, something and the lab reports and so on. But usually uh, we do have uh, software labs for studying these computer engineering software. Now, because we won't be able to open the labs in the first semester, but uh, you will be able to download the student versions of the of all the software and run the software from home and you will have the uh, assistance uh, from our lecturing staff using uh, online zoom sessions or some other means so that's all from me and now back to uh, Bridget thank you Great. Thanks, Professor Seichi. I think that was really helpful, hopefully, for students to get an overview of the program as well as um, sort of the resources and supports that are there. So again, if you have any questions, make sure to, to drop them into the chat. Um, I just want to cover a few other things in terms of um, support and, and information from the university. Um, obviously, you have all been contacted by the international office about your opportunities to um, select the um, online on time model or to potentially defer your offer if that's what you prefer. But if you are looking to go ahead with, with this um, type of mode of study, there are some things you just need to be aware of. Um, obviously, you need to, to have the offer for, for the program and you need to accept that offer on PAC. Um, you also will still need to meet all of the entry criteria for, for the, the program if you have any conditions. So I know there's maybe some questions around um, final exams or final results. Um, if you do have questions, please do send us um, an email or, or drop us a line and we'll be happy to assist you with that. Um, we are, as a university, accepting um, some alternative English language tests if you've had difficulty getting your, your English language score. Um, one of those is the Duolingo English test, so um, certainly students can, can access that and submit that as part of their um, English language uh, criteria if necessary. Um, we will be doing sort of different types of orientation activities for students as well. Some of this may be online, so um, just be aware that there will be um, opportunities for you to engage with that and, and that will be a requirement of participating in the program. Um, obviously, you know, things like having a stable broadband um, internet service are going to be important. Um, you will still have to adhere to course timetables and completion of assignments. So all of that will, will run um, almost as naturally as it would on campus, but we'll, we'll uh, be working with students through that. Um, we understand there's, there's some questions still around um, immigration and securing student visas, but we're working very closely with the Department of Justice and INIS, our immigration service, to uh, make sure students have all the information they need in order to secure any, any student visas. Um, and then finally, um, probably some thoughts if we do move to um, on-campus provision in semester two in terms of accommodation, if that's required for you. We do have university accommodation and we'd be happy to, to answer any questions for you with regard to that. So 
I suppose given everything that's going on um, in the world, the question is, you know, why still DCU and why would you choose to, to participate in this program? I think the important thing to really sort of um, emphasize for you is that um, we are still here for you. We are um, here to support you through your program. You still will have access to all of the things that you would if you were here on campus. Um, that includes areas like the Writing Center or the Maths Learning Center. Um, they will also have online provision to assist students. We have a really great student support and development office who do lots of different activities for students to get involved, but also to support you through your, your um, academic program here. And we have also um, the great career service. So that's really important as you prepare for what you might do after your, your program. And um, they run all sorts of um, sessions and different ways to assist students um, from a career side. Um, as Professor Sechi mentioned, we do have um, a, a fully um, enabled virtual learning environment for students. So it's called Loop. And you would have access to that where you'll be able to engage with your academics, your peers on the program, um, and also facilitates any group working or things that you might need to do. So we've had that in place for um, a number of years and have used it very successfully. And even through this last semester when the university unexpectedly closed down, we were able to, to really um, use that as a, as a tool for students. Um, and certainly, you know, we, we want to keep focused on your goals and, and helping you achieve that. So we're, the, we're there to support you through that process. Um, this is just another slide sort of um, emphasizing the supports that are there. And um, I guess that's just the big thing we really want you to take away from, from this today is that there's still a, a very high quality academic program and also a lot of support available for students um, as we kind of go through these uncharted waters. So um, please, please know that that's, that's there for you. Um, I also just wanted to, to say um, we do have a um, specific landing page on our website that has lots of information about the online on time model. Um, so if you haven't visited that yet, please do um, go to the website. Um, it's just dcu.ie slash int.pg2020 um, and there's an FAQ on there and there's lots of information as well. So, so please do visit that in the first instance for any information, but you can also email us. We have a dedicated email address, um, int.pg2020 at dcu.ie. And we are working through those emails as they come through. There's a high volume kind of coming through at the moment. So we do ask you to be patient as we try to, to answer everyone's questions, but we're happy to Skype or Zoom or chat to students as well. So just make sure that you get in touch with us um, if you have, have any questions. Um, at this point then, I'm gonna hand it back over to Colum. And if there have been any questions coming, coming through chat, maybe we can, can work through any of those. Sure, thanks Bridget and thanks to uh, Professor Sechi for going through that. Um, one of the questions that uh, students, I guess, frequently ask, and it might be good um, to, to hear um, the academic perspective on this, is around that project in the summer semester and any um, further details on, on that kind of practicum project. Students, I suppose, aren't sure uh, what to expect from that. So it would be interesting to hear um, a little bit more, if possible, on that. Uh, the project runs over the two semesters plus the summer period. So basically, uh, you start developing it from the very first weeks of the first semester. But the project is a research-oriented project. So it's not just like the undergraduate final project where you just uh, design something and eventually manufacture it and test it. This is uh, research-oriented and this is the requirement by, set by Engineers Island. Um, so basically, it's uh, just like any other research project. It's uh, you, you get uh, uh, the project brief and then you start with a literature survey and then you start uh, your own experiments. So at the end, and, um, uh, you need to uh, deliver 
you will find your report somewhere uh, at the at the end of summer. Although uh, we might extend it more towards the end of October, uh, depending on this COVID-19 and so on. Um, and then at the end, uh, there will be a viva uh, in front of a panel and in front of your uh, your peers. And this is yet another requirement by Engineers Island so that you can communicate with uh, with, uh, with other people um, of your project. So basically it is a research project and it also includes writing a research paper, uh, a journal paper, an eight page journal paper. Uh, it might not be published, but it has to have the same format and the same standard uh, as if you are writing a conference paper or a, or a, German, a, German, a journal paper. Uh, because it is a research project. Now, uh, there are two ways of how you start it. Either you bring your own project, which means that uh, you have already an idea either from industry or from uh, your work or whatever, or you can select from our list. At the beginning of the first semester, there will be a list going up uh, of uh, projects that uh, have been initiated and developed by uh, well, the title developed by our lecturing staff, and you can select one of those, or you can alternatively you can select or pick one of your own uh, projects. Brilliant! I think that's really useful for for students to have uh, an oversight like that. So thank you for taking the time to explain that. Now, one of the other um, questions that that students frequently ask, I suppose. Um, and I, I know you won't have an exact answer to this, but for uh, international students who are going to be based around the world in different time zones, um, maybe you could talk a little bit about Loop and, and the VLE and how they will access resources and if they can't attend um, a, a lecture in, in person, will it still be available to them afterwards? Well, the good thing with Loop is that it is accessible at any time. So even if it's midnight here, uh, uh, on your own time, in your own time, you can access it. Now, uh, it hasn't been decided yet uh, whether it will be live lecturing. Probably not because um, uh, yet again, there will be a, a problem with different time zones. So it's most likely that uh, we will be recording even if it's live lecturing, we will be recording it and then it will be made available on loop. Or there will be no live lectures at all, but a, a lecture offline, which is recorded and just uh, made available to students. Thank you very much. And I think um, I can probably ad address the other um, question that's come in is around um, an, uh, an intake in, in January and there is no January intake for this program. It's a, a September intake for uh, this particular program. Uh, that's right. And the reason for it is that uh, uh, you must uh, have a certain uh, kind of sequence of, of uh, modules. For example, research practice and methodology, which is a first semester module, it is needed for all the other modules. So it would be a kind of unwise to start uh, to have an intake in February, uh, which would be missing obviously this module. And also uh, because of the project, because many of the modules you would be needing uh, for the project. But if, you, if we have a February intake, that would mean that you finish the project before you actually get those those important modules. So for the sake of integrity, uh, kind of academic integrity, uh, we only have um, a semester one intake. Fantastic, thank you. I think it's really helpful for students to understand uh, why um, there is no January intake and, and that it isn't a decision that DCU takes lightly. There is a real rationale behind that. So thank you for uh, taking the time to answer those questions. I think um, it has been really wonderful for students to have oversight and, and really get a, a chance to kind of hear from you uh, about how the, the program will run. And um, I 
I think that that really addresses all the questions that we have. Um, Bridget, is there anything else um, that we need to to discuss? No, I don't think so. I mean, hopefully um, that that information was useful for for everyone. Again, I want to reiterate the thanks to Professor Sechi and and to my colleagues in the international office and the Faculty of Engineering and Computing. Um, I think that's been really helpful for for all of us to to hear from you in terms of the academic content of the program and how we envision this moving forward. I think it's important to note for, for any of the students on the call that um, you will be receiving more information from the international office shortly um, in writing more details around the program. Uh, we'll be asking for you to sort of think about what you want to do uh, for 2020 and um, asking you to let us know how, how you want to proceed. So please do keep an eye out for those communications and um, let us know if, if you have any questions or, or comments or concerns and we'll be happy, as I said, to, to address them as best we can. Um, but if there's, there's no other, other questions, um, we may sort of wrap it up there and, and just really wanna say that, um, again, we appreciate your time. We look forward to working with you, whether that is in a virtual environment or here on campus, Ireland is here and, and we would love to have you, you come and study with us and, and DCU as well. So, um, you know, just uh, let us know if there's anything we can do to, to help. So um, if that's it, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up. We'll make this recording available. And uh, just uh, can I have a, a word? Yes. Um, uh, we have been running this program for more than 15 years now. And traditionally, about half of the cohort is usually uh, uh, made, up, made up of uh, uh, non-EU overseas students, so we are uh, we are catered for uh, students from India, from China, so that's not a problem. Great, yeah, I think that's really important as well, just to highlight the diversity of the program, the ability to to work with with students from Ireland and from other international locations, and certainly as you embark on an engineering career, we know those those kind of multinational teams and things that you'll be working on. It's really great that you would be exposed to that here at DCU and um, that you're working with academics who can, can help and support you through that process. So um, again, we just want to thank everybody for their time and uh, we look forward to, to hearing from you and, and working with you in the future. Please stay safe, stay well, and um, you know, take care of yourselves. And uh, thank you very much.